Inche Johan Merrick and welcome to Penang Institute Chats. Um, we're very happy that you agreed to do this with us. And uh, now you used to run Talent Corp, and yes. now you're helping the the finance ministry with with its uh, budget and whatnot. Yes. But I I would like to ask you concerning the brain drain. One thing that sometimes worries me, we we might be focusing too much on the outward brain drain of Malaysians moving overseas and and working and studying and whatnot, and not enough returning. But within the country itself, I tend to think that there is a lot of um, silo, silo working or whatever one wants to call that. Um, we don't have very much synergy where our intellectual capital is concerned. And that to me amounts to, must amount to quite a substantial brain drain really on, on what otherwise could contribute to, to society's development and our economic development. Um, so perhaps I'm thinking instead of looking at the brain drain, should one not also look at ways of creating more synergy within the public service or even the private sector, the universities, our intellectual basically should be should be working more with each other. Um, is, is that is that something that one should look at and try to perhaps uh, do something about? I think the point that you raised. Uh, is correct. Uh, we have different forms of brain drain right here in Malaysia. Um, yes, I, I used to look after talent cooperation and there we used to focus a lot more in terms of the phenomenon of Malaysians leaving the country. Um, and I guess the context there was how do we then promote um, brain circulation and certainly we would be the last people to say Malaysians shouldn't leave the country. And I think there is certainly value in Malaysians, Definitely. you know, going off to the best universities in the world, or even sometimes uh, furthering their professional ambitions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're you know, certainly if you're an IT programmer, surely you want a Malaysian to be, you know, going to the Silicon Valley. Uh, the challenge was how do we ensure that some of them, having gained from this exposure and experience. Uh, would then consider as an option to, to return and contribute to our national development. And I think while much is to be said about um, brain drain, I, I think it's useful to put it in context. Um, I think on one hand, um, we've not reached the stage of some other countries um, where um, the brain drain has reached a level where it's completely depleted um, the stock of um, well-educated or highly skilled uh, human capital, it sort of prevents those countries from then developing. I think in some respects you could say that, you know, if you look at our, our labour force of about 15 million, um, out of it at least a quarter of them are considered tertiary educated, uh, we have been able to maintain that uh, stock mm -hmm. of um, 3 4 million right. uh, tertiary educated uh, in our country. Uh, so in that sense, whatever outflow is matched by inflow may be coming in from our university. So there's some level of, um, shall we say, the situation is perhaps not as bad as some other countries. But at the same time, we cannot also afford to be complacent because uh, it's estimated out of that 3 million odd, uh, at least the tertiary educated Malaysians overseas is about order of magnitude of 300,000. So that's almost like saying 1 in 10, 10% of our tertiary educated are, are, are outside of the country and there's also a, a, a issue of selection bias. These could be some of our more talented Malaysians and so uh, it's not as bad as some other countries but at the same time we can't be complacent and we certainly want for them to potentially return. But when you then talk about synergies, um, this then also brings the question about how do you then promote collaboration. Uh, certainly if there are Malaysians overseas, you know there are some Malaysians that, that you know you feel that they would be perhaps more of a value uh, to Malaysia where they are and contributing back. I mean, I guess a very good example is, you know, the CEO of Broadcom, you know, he's mm -hmm. over there in the US and certainly I think he's been instrumental in the growth of, right. of Broadcom right here in Penang. Um, sometimes it's not just about trying to reverse a brain drain, it's also trying to see in a more broader sense right. how people can contribute from, right. from where they are. Mm -hmm. And this comes back to, I think, your other issue about the situation where we have um, talent uh, right here in the country and I know certainly speaking from the public sector perspective uh, 
we do tend to operate very much in silos, uh, uh, even between ministries. I think sometimes we almost just work within the confines of our own uh, respective uh, ministries. And I, and I dare say the same extends um, to our public universities as well. I mean, certainly there is now a greater push uh, to promote uh, collaborations, um, idea of also being able to do exchanges uh, in government. We call them cross-fertilization, where uh, members from the public sector then work in the private sector and vice versa. Uh, I think that should be done more. I think we often do hear that uh, academics in public universities would rather go for a sabbatical with an overseas university than necessarily mm -hmm. doing a sabbatical with, a, they, with they industry, to do that. industry domestically, where really then the potential synergy of helping national development potentially is greater than just doing a, you know, a very theoretical uh, attachment uh, abroad. So certainly there is that um, potential synergy if we are be better able to, to do such collaborations. I know the Ministry of Higher Education certainly uh, has championed this idea of what they call a quadruple helix. How do you then get the academia, uh, industry, um, um, uh, community um, to all be part of uh, this sort of interplay where uh, you wouldn't want research or knowledge within university just purely for the sake of knowledge sake. How can it also benefit industry and also communities? Uh, uh, that would be the, the ideal case uh, scenario, at least for them. But there are also many other forms of brain drain. I mean, another one that I think is also quite pertinent uh, for Malaysia is also even in terms of anything of gender, um, there's still a very big disparity uh, between the female labour force participation rate and the male participation rate. I think based on 2017, um, the female labour force participation rate is at 54.7% compared to the male participation rate of 80.1%. Uh, that's a big differential and when you then take into account the fact that increasingly our universities, especially public universities now, the majority of, of women graduates, uh, we don't redress this. It's also going to be another form of, of brain drain uh, that again in the spirit of not optimising on our talent pool, that's also another area that we need to pay attention to. Well, very good points. Um, so actually when we stare at the brain drain, it, the, the concept itself is quite difficult, brain drain, right? Because, um, I mean, people do live different parts of their life overseas and they move around. So very often it's, in, it's a loop in a way, it's not a brain drain. So the, the negative side of that traditional way of looking at brain drain might not be as bad as, as one might immediate, immediately think, while at the same time, the, the talents that remain in the country might not be as useful as we might think them to be for the simple reason that society might work too much in silos and um, at least until recently we were we seemed a very divided country discourse wise um, part of the reason perhaps we, why we talk about the Malaysia Baru because we, we seem to think that now maybe we can do things in fresh ways and maybe work for more synergies and more you know more effectively I, you, you know, when, when you talk about synergies, I can't help but um, comment on this point that actually we Malaysians are as clever as I think anyone in the world because we see that many of our Malaysians are able to enter into the best universities yes, in, in the world. Um, but perhaps there's something to be said about not so much on the IQ level uh, of course, some people like to talk about EQ and other mm. forms of uh, uh, quotients, but perhaps sometimes it's said to be the way we do work. Uh, and whilst very often people talk about innovations in the context of some new sexy technology, sometimes the innovations are also around how we actually do do work. I know, uh, speaking from the government perspective, I don't know, I find myself attending way too many meetings which are not particularly productive. We also have the tendency of certain cultural norms that perhaps may not be the most conducive for the best ideas. You know, people sometimes can be a bit too uh, conscious about protocol or seniority that sometimes the best, the person with the best ideas in the room may, may, may feel not uh, at full comfort to, to share their ideas, mm -hmm. especially if their boss is in the room or they mm -hmm. feel that it's out of order for them to speak out of turn. Um, so perhaps to unlock some of the synergies requires us to re-look re in terms of how 
we are structured. I mean, it's sometimes right. said it's that Malaysia problem. has a very high power distance uh, um, relationship. Uh, we're a bit too, uh, uh, what do you call it, subservient to oh, yeah. authority okay. or, or, mm -hmm. or seniority. Mm -hmm. And that may be also something that holds back us optimizing, as you said, synergies or optimizing on our on our talent. Uh, yeah, that, that's something that one should be working on as well, apart from attracting talent back and, and all that. But I think I've used up uh, the 10 minutes that, uh, that we had for you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, okay. so thank you so much. And, uh, thank you for, for, for spending the time with us. Mm -hmm.